All right, my dear, so here's the target that represents, I wouldn't say all of them because there's tons of them, but most important and widely used unit conversions for the metric system. Metric system is the one that is used in science, as opposed to the English we're still keeping, not for sentimental reasons, but we'll probably never get rid of it because of football where we have all those yards and feet and all that good stuff. In metric system, what you need to pay attention to is the these little symbols that stand for, let's start with giga and mega that we all know because of compute. There you go, giga and mega uh, that we know thanks to computers. Before you were born, we were talking about kilobytes. And you know this unit K from thousands for kilograms, kilometers, and just Ks when we talk about money. 100k for example. If you look here, this is the baseline. For example, CM would stand for centimeters. C standing for centi and M standing for meters. So do not confuse it with the little M here, which stands for a milli. KM base being meter, K being prefix. Uh, that would mean that you are multiplying by 10 to the third or a thousand. And how do you know that it's 10 to the third? If you follow the circle, so this circle right here tells you that k is 10 to the third. So this is just to visually kind of summarize all of them. Another thing you should notice is that some of the circles are outside of the unit. Again, this is my unit line. Some circles are outside of it which means that that unit is bigger. So kilometer, megabyte, kilobyte, or gigabyte, whatever. So these units outside of the circle are greater. And the powers, if we look here, are positive, the powers of 10. So giga is 10 to the ninth, although in computers it's different. Um, mega, right here, mega, is 10 to the 6th, and then kilo, as I said already, is a 1,000. Anything that is inside the circle, that will be smaller. So if you look at centi, milli, micro, and nano, those are tiny, they're smaller, they're within the unit, and the powers for those would be negative, the powers of 10. So nano, all our nanotechnologies are teeny tiny, you would divide that number by 10 to the ninth power, or you would multiply it by 10 to the negative ninth. Micro, like microbes, you have 10 to the negative sixth. Milli is the opposite of kilo. Centi, we talked about, is for 100. And then one is your base unit again. So let's say I have five kilometers, for example, and I want to go to the base, I want to go to meters. So what I do is I take five, and for kilo, I will just put 10 to the third. So you can keep it like that, or you can write it as 5,000 meters. Let's do 17 megawatts. So watt is your unit, and mega is your prefix. You find that prefix on the circle, that's mega, which stands for 10 to the sixth. So if I'm converting 17 megawatts to watts, I will take 17, multiply by what the prefix stands for, which is 10 to the sixth, and you are gonna end up with 17 with six zeros after that. The logic between using the circle as actually one of my students shared her vision of this, and I love it, you can think about it as the rule states, if you're going big to small, then your power of 10 will be big. So what, what, what is meant by that? Big to small. So if you are jumping from something like giga or mega or kilo or whatever, anyway, so if you're going from a big unit to the base right here, you're going big to small. Or you can even go across the base. They can torture you with something mega to micro, for example. Regardless of what you're converting, if you are converging to the center, to the bullseye, you're going big to small, and the power of 10 will be big. In other words, the power of 10 will be positive. If, however, you're going small to big, 
then you can deduce your power of 10 will be small or negative. So for example, if I'm going from micrometers to meters, I'm going from small to big and my power of 10 will be negative. And that is literally it. So let's, let's practice. If I need to convert five centimeters to meters, I'm going from here, which is small, to here, which is bigger than that. And then my power of 10 will be small or negative. So five centimeters to meters, I'm multiplying by what the prefix stands for. The prefix stands for 10 to the negative 2. So boom, 10 to the negative 2 meters. However, again, if it's 5 meters, so if I'm going from meters, I'm going from the base to the centi. I'm going big to small, then my power of 10 will be big. So 5 meters to centimeters, even though centi, again, stands for 10 to the negative 2, I'm going big to small, then it's going to be 5 times 10 to the second, 500 centimeters. So 5 meter is 500 centimeters while 5 centimeters equals 0 0.05 meters or 5 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. Fun starts when you are asked to convert between, basically across your basic unit. So let's say I want to go from millimeters to kilometers. So visually think which way are you going? You're going small to big and therefore your power of 10 is going to be small, it's going to be negative. So what you're looking at is millimeters stands for 10 to the negative 3. Kilometers, or kilometers as some people say, stands for 10 to the third. What is your gap? Your gap is 10 to the sixth from negative 3 to 3. The distance between these two numbers on a number line, if you will, so if I were to draw a number line, negative 3, then I have a 0 in between there, and there is a 3. The distance between these two numbers is 6. So 10 to the power of 6 is your step between milli and kilo. I went from mega to micro. Mega is 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6 to 10 to the negative 6. Well, the gap here is 12. So 10 to the 12th. That's what you determine first. And then you again ask yourself, self, which way am I going? I'm going from here to here. That would be big to small. And then remember the big to small rule calls for a big power of 10. So let's say I want to convert 32 megawatts to microwatts. No, I have nothing else to do. So micro and mega, they are separated by a gap of 12 powers of 10. And again, you're going from big of mega to tiny of micro. 32 times 10 to the 12th, that would be your microwatts if you had 32 megawatts that you started with. Things get a little more complicated if you have decimals and whatnot in your basics. So if your base number, let's say my base number is 100, 1200, 1200 kilometers, and I want to convert that to centimeters just because I want to. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to work with your number, the base number. You're going to turn this to 1.2. 10 to the third, because if I put the decimal point here, I will have to cut off three placeholders. And then I have to compensate by multiplying it times 10 to that power, the power of the number of placeholders that I just chipped off. So 1.2 times 10 to the third, that's still kilometers. And then you're going to look at what you are going to and what you're going from. I started from kilometers and I want to go to centimeters. That's big to small. Big, small calls for big. So your power of 10 in your conversion will be positive. What is the gap?
the gap is you started at 10 to the third and at 10 to the negative 2. The jump from negative 2 to 3 is a 5-er. So that calls for 1.2 10 to the third, which we had at the beginning. And then here's your conversion. Your gap was 5, so it's going to be 10 to the fifth. Again, not to the negative fifth, because you're going big to small. So your answer altogether is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the eighth, and that was centimeters. Now let's reverse, and let's say I want to go from tiny micrometers, and I had um, 15,000 micrometers. And I want to figure out what that would be in, well, I don't know, megameters, just for the fun of it. I've never heard megameters being used before, but whatever. This is just for the sake of the exercise. So mega to micro is your gap. You went from, I'm sorry, the other way around, micro to mega. Boom. You went from small to big. That calls for a small power of 10, meaning negative. Figure out your gap. You went from negative 6 all the way to 6. That is 10 to the 12th, the gap. But because, again, you're going from small to big, it's going to be 10 to the negative 12. Well, then, let's look at our original number. Our original number was 15,000, which is the same as 1.5. I chip off four decimal places or holders, placeholders. So 10 to the fourth times 10 to the negative 12. Fourth and negative 12 gives you negative eight. So 1.5 times 10 to the negative eight. And that would be our mega meters. So that's as far as using this for just basic and not squared or cubed or anything like that units when you convert, just straight units. So for example, let's say I have a square and it measures 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. Obviously the area of this square will be 25 centimeters squared. Well then, what is that in meters squared? Meters squared, again, meter is a unit. That's the basic. Centi is the prefix unit for this. It's a length, so therefore it's measured in meters. That's the standard unit in science for lengths. So centimeter to meter. Centi is 10 to the negative second, and I'm going from small to big. So I'm going to keep that 10 to the negative second. So here's the usual way that you can do it. I can go ahead and convert my lengths right away to 0 0.05 times 0 0.05 and that will be 0 0.0025 because you have to provide four decimal places because you multiply hundreds so you have ten thousandths. Another way to do it, so I had 25 centimeters squared. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the conversion when I go from a centimeter to a meter, so I'm going from 10 to the negative 2 to the base, small, big, small, it's 10 to the negative 2, and then I have to square that because the centimeters were squared. So that's 10 to the negative 4th. So then you take your 25 and multiply by 10 to the negative 4th, and that gives you 0 0.0025. Preferably, you write it like that, or even better, the scientific notation, if you'll remember, calls for one placeholder, then the decimal point, and then whatever the precision calls for. So I had 25, that was only two digits, so 2.5, 10 to the negative, and now it's only 10 to the negative third, because I already made it smaller. Now, if you need practice on how to convert from and to scientific notation, I can give you that later. For now, let's practice a little more with all those squares and cubes and stuff like that. So for example, let's say I have a cube. 
it's a humongous, humongous cube and it measures five kilometers on each side. Then what is our volume? The volume of this cube will be 125 kilometers cubed. Now what if I want to know how many cubic meters that is? Again, I'm looking at my conversions. I'm going from kilo to the base. Kilo stands for a thousand. So again, I could have done 5,000 times 5,000 and times 5,000 again. Lots of lots of zeros. Or I could have done the notion that kilometer calls for 10 to the third when converting to meters which I see from here. I went from 10 to the third to the base. I went from big to small, so I'm keeping my power of 10 positive. 10 to the third, and it was cubic kilometers, therefore I have to cube my power. So that's going to be 10 to the ninth, because you remember power of power is the multiplication of our exponents here. So it's going to be 3 times 3. Then I'm going back to my basic number. My basic number was 125 times 10 to the ninth, and with scientific notation, it's going to be 1.25. So I just made my number 100 times smaller, so I would have to turn my power of 10 100 times bigger. 1.25 10 to the 11th is the same as 125 times 10 to the 9th. So that's converting your units when they're cubed and squared. Now what if you have something like 60 miles an hour, 60 mph, and you want to go to kilometers an hour? Each mile, so one mile is 1.6 kilometers. So what I do is 60 I had m over h. So I keep my 60, and then instead of mi, which is a mile, I want to go to kilometers. Well, then what is 1 mile to 1 kilometer is 1.6, and hours are kept that way. 60 times 1, 6 is 96, because it's, I could do 6 times 16, 6 times 10 is 60 plus 36, which is 6 times 6, gives me a 96, just a refreshment. So 96 kilometers per hour. Well, let's say I want to know what that is in meters per second. So 96 kilometers per hour, and I want to go to meters per second. So again, I keep my base which is 96, and then I think, hard, kilometers to meters. We've done that before. Kilo stands for 10 to the third. I'm going big to small, so that's going to be 10 to the third, or a thousand. And then what is one hour in seconds? Well, 60 minutes, 60 seconds in each, that's going to be 3,600. So you divide by 3600, and then simplify, chip off these two zeros. Think of 96 and 36. This can be simplified by 12. So 96, that's going to be 8, and then this would be 3. So that would give me 8 over 3, and I still have this 0 here. So it's going to be 80 over 3 meters per second. Now the trick that I always teach to my physics students is when you go from kilometers an hour to meters per second, since you're multiplying by 1,000 and you're dividing by 3,600, you ultimately are dividing the number by 3.6. So for example, if I have 72 kilometers an hour. If we were doing it the long way, we would be multiplying by a thousand, divided by 3600, then getting rid of zeros, blah, blah, blah. Who wants that? 
all you need to do when you go from kilometers per hour to meters per second is divide by 3.6. So 72 divided by 3.6 when you're dividing by a decimal, get rid of it. So 720 over 36, that would be, my dear, 20 meters per second. If, however, I want to go from meters per second to kilometers an hour, in other words, backwards, well, if I went from, let's say, 20 meters per second to kilometers per hour, the trick is multiply by 3.6. So that would lead you to 72. The long way would be, so 20 is my base. Now think about, I had seconds. Each second, one second, is like 1 divided by 3600 of an hour. But if second is already in the denominator, and I put this into the denominator, think about it, 1 divided by 1 divided by 3600, it's a three-storied fraction. In a three-storied fraction, you always bring the third story upstairs. So that's like 3600 over 1. So I would, instead of dividing by a fraction, I would multiply by that fraction's denominator. So I would multiply it by 3600. And then, since this 20 was meters per second, so meters to kilometers, there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. So I would divide by a thousand, get rid of zeros. So it's like 20, blum, blum. 20 multiplied by 3.6, which is like 2 times 36, which is 72. So 20 meters per second to kilometers an hour would be 72. And then the last crasher, which you will find in non-metric conversions, 3 feet. And I want to know what that is in inches. Well, 1 foot is 12 inches. So therefore, 3 times 12, 36 inches. That's pretty easy, right? Now, if, however, I have a square, and I want to know the area of it. Let's say it's 10 feet in length. It's a square. So then, my area of the square is going to be 100 feet. But those feet are squared. So you could have done 120 times 120, and that would be 144 with two zeros, square inches. Or you could have done, so 10 feet times 10 feet is 100 square feet. And then what is within a foot? There are 12 inches. And those feet are squared. Therefore, it's going to be 144 squared inches. So all together, when you put it, it was 100 square feet. You have 144 for the conversion of a foot squared to an inch squared. So it's going to be 144 with two zeros. That's going to be inches squared.